I don't know what story I have to tell. Oh, one that you weren't sure you wanted to have there. We had a back stairway that led from the second floor into the breakfast room. Now, our breakfast room was the size of most people's dining room. And we were ten when we were... <clears throat> no, it was about this size. We were ten when just the family was home, and we always, almost always had somebody. Same light colored wood breakfast table on Lemon Island? No. No, no, no. That was our dining room. Oh, on Lemon Island? No, no. That was a smaller room. Much smaller room. Go ahead. And I don't know why, but for some reason the family regarded me as somebody who was looking for privilege <laughs> all the time. <laughs> it was absolutely unjust, you may be uh, sure. Never always getting out of the work. <laughs> and when everybody was seated at the table for dinner, and we did have nice dinner times because it was everybody was talking and it was really a yeah. live situation. I would come down the back stairway and why it was a winding stairway and I would come into the breakfast room and my father would stand up and say, Princess, and I would walk around to my seat and sit down. But it was done. He was an absolute actor. Oh, oh he was a marvelous actor. He, missed it. he did. You should have heard him with dialect. Irish and Yes, he was very good at that. And, and he was a man who, as religious as he was, he loved baseball. He loved fighting. We got our first radio because there was some famous uh, boxing match on that night. Well, he, he liked he liked sports, but he could never play them. He never had the opportunity, but he did like baseball. Well, there's a picture in here that we just uncovered this morning of him with the and Where's the car right now? Yeah. He had wide interests. He really did. He liked the Jewish theater, which they would go to occasionally. He liked often. music. He, he loved music, and he learned well. to play the harmonica himself, and he was marvelous at it. Marvelous. If he had ever played an instrument, he would have been good at it, because he really was a musician. He loved it. He really played a, mar a harmonica like a, a real instrument. And you? We don't what have a lot of music. But a couple of you turned out, <laughs> turned out being able to demonstrate it. He took a great deal of pride in all of us looking well. He liked us to look well. He really did. He was very proud of my mother, who was a small woman. But she stood so well and with such regal air that she always looked taller than she was. We're small. And Sarah. And she dressed so nice. She dressed nicely. She had good taste. I remember some of her out. I really did. In Atlantic yeah. City, where people used to dress up on Saturday night when oh, they went to see was real dressed up at night. Saturday night. Yeah. Remember that? Oh, yeah. She, Lena remembers this outfit, too. She had a black lace dress with a bright green satin. Uh, it must have been like a shift, you know, underneath. And they wore hats in those days, too, when they went out. They wore dressy hats. And during the day, they carried parasols mm. for the fun. It was really lovely. Yeah. Really Atlantic City yeah, in its whole time was the lovely. In the 1890s or the early 1900s, this was it. Yeah. And well, well, the 1900s, 1900s before I remember, because I wasn't even born yet. But uh, uh, 1910, 1920, they dressed. That was really nice for them. They dressed in the... <laughs> They dressed in the 30s, too. Mom never came down looking sloppy. No. Never. Never saw her in those sloppy robe and slippers. Yeah. She never. was always, always dressed. Yeah. That I remember because I grew up with that. My mother never uh, no? came down in the bathroom. I still don't do that in my apartment. Well, I do. I have my breakfast in my bed. Oh, well, I may do that because I shower afterwards. Yeah. Thank you. But when I come home and get undressed, I get dressed into a dress. A house dress and an old dress yeah, I that I use as a house dress, not a robe. Yeah, I do not walk I around in robe. Take off my clothes and get into the robe. I, I may do it, but I always feel guilty about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a hangover. <laughs> <laughs> not You're guilty a, enough not to do it, though. <laughs> I, do, I come down in the morning in a robe at six o'clock and I feel guilty. I'm not fully dressed. <laughs> More grandpa and grandma. I guess Grandmom took care of about every convalescing individual in the family. On the fringes of the family as well. Yes, you said it on the fringes. Sure, not just Whoever was sick or was hospitalized would come to our house afterwards to recuperate, mm -hmm. and my mother would take care of them. And it was an aunt, it was a cousin. We even had a cousin who lived in Jersey somewhere who came to Philadelphia to have an appendectomy. 
Now, appendectomies in those days were not a matter of four or five days and sent home. You stayed two weeks in the hospital. If you stayed 12 days, as I did, you were doing extremely well. And then you came home and you barely moved around. <laughs> not so these days, of course. So this cousin Rose from Jersey had an appendectomy in Philadelphia. Now Rose came from a family on her mother's side. She had about 10 or 12 aunts and uncles who lived in Philadelphia. But when she got out of the hospital, that trip to Jersey was going to kill her. So where did she go? She came to our house to recuperate. And of course, that all this aunts and uncles came to visit Came to visit her. Her. <laughs> That helped out at home, too. Came for dinner. Oh, God, what a family to grow up in. It's a marvelous story. Oh, I wish I could write. Well, we took our piano lessons. We took oh. from a teacher who was Uncle Morris Phillips' sister person. She oh, taught piano. different when we she heard taught. about the German fellow. That oh, that was when I was very little. Helbling. Oh, Helbling. Yeah. Oh, that was our first piano. Mm -hmm. He was a piano tuner as he well. <laughs> and he taught us piano. What else did he I teach know. us, Rhea? String fish. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That's where we learned it, you know. <laughs> that was all in the half hour of teaching piano, too. Like well, when, when Rosalie, Rosalie Phillips came to teach us piano lessons, we all went to school, so there were every one of us. You took And we didn't take piano lessons on Saturday, so she had to do it after school. I don't remember me taking it that point, though. Oh, no, Minnie took it then, too. Sure, she then took it from Rosalie. Sure, she did. Yeah, she took from Rosalie, I'm pretty sure. Well, anyway, anyway, it wasn't Rosalie, it was Rosalia. Rosalia. Oh, my goodness. She was Rosalia. Rosalia. You didn't take that on. I didn't like Rosalia as much as Rosalie. I think Rosalie's much Rosalie. more musical than Rosalia. Yes, yeah, she tried Rosalie, I know, but I'm Rosalie. Rosalie. No, so, I tried Rosalind from Shakespeare's As You Like It. And Brody? Well, okay. that was a camp yeah, name. Yeah, Brody, Brody was a camp name. Call, yes. but My father called call me Brody. any name I wanted to change to. He was the only one. When I came home from my first real play, which was called Babs, about a girl named Barbara, a teenager, and I was in love with the theater from Penrod on. That was the first show. The second was Babs. I came home and I said, I'm changing my name to Barbara. I announced it. Of course, nobody called me Barbara. Nobody would think of it. And I said, you may call me Babs for short. My father called me Barbara, Babs, whatever. <laughs> when I changed it to Rosalind in high school because I read As You Like It and I decided I like Rosalind better, he called me Rosalind. And he always did it with a tinge. A certain something in his voice and a certain courtliness in his manner that made yeah, a point the word that really of decided. calling you by a name that wasn't yours. <laughs> and you knew it. <laughs> yeah. But he was such an actor. He had such finesse and such fine points about things. He was superb. But when she was a camp and came home as Rody, nobody else called her Rody, but Pop continued to call me Rody. He called me Rody all along after that. Yeah. He was very cooperative. <laughs> <laughs> what about the piano lessons? Piano well, lessons were something that never happened in anybody's life but ours. She had six girls to give to get piano lessons to in one afternoon. She wasn't going to come and, twice. And so she okay. came right after school and started. Whoever came in next was the one who took it next. And then stayed for dinner, and then finished up <laughs> the other two or three afterwards. And she lived alone, and I'll bet you she enjoyed the dinner. <laughs> and Yane, if you were playing Hungarian Rhapsody, which is what happened one day, one of us was playing Hungarian Rhapsody, and Yane, who loved the rhythm, was running around the living room where the piano was. We had that on the record, and he used to race around that room like the music. And I don't know, one of the more advanced, maybe it was Min or somebody, was playing Hungarian Rhapsody, and he was running around the living room, and I thought, she's going to kill him. When we finished, she said, you know, he has a very good sense of rhythm. <laughs> I never, I almost fell over it. <laughs> she wanted another pupil. <laughs> she for breakfast. Her recitals were things oh, never to be forgotten. That, yeah. that is something to put in a book. Yeah, that was really she gave a recital and she had, she taught singing as well. She had something of a voice, not really good, but there was something of a voice. So she taught singing and she taught piano and she taught something else. Yeah, Robert, Robert played, huh? Robert played at the recital. What elocution? Robert played for a little variation. He played violin. He played violin. Robert? Robert, Robert Block. Block. Uncle my uncle Abe's son, who was my age. Mm -hmm. They lived in Washington now for a long After time. After they married, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> she gave this recital, and all of the people in it were related to us. <laughs> we were all on There were the six girls and Nikki. And Robert Block played violin, though he wasn't her student, but he played for a variation. And Miriam was her niece. Miriam and she Carl sang. Block sang. Miriam, Miriam Phillips. Phillips was her niece. Uh, they sang, and, and 
it was right. just our whole family in French. <laughs> and we were on more than once. We played solos and we had duet. And Rosie and Mickey and I played a trio. Oh, no, no. So, the ghastly sounds were okay. <laughs> When they played, it sounded like almost like Mark's concert at school that time. It sounded almost yeah, like a race. Who was going to come out first? <laughs> no, the bass, the middle, or the <laughs> But the program she had, I do. No, I don't agree with her because I was in it. She had her program printed, and all the day. <laughs> and everybody who well, here and there there was a Phillips and there was a Block, yeah, but, but it was all related. Really. Well. When you have a recital, of course, you should have flowers. So, Mom, we had a fruit uh, dealer, a, a fellow over where we bought our fruit. We used to keep peonies in a bucket of water there. You know, and a huge know. cup. Yeah. And every once in a while, we would buy some. We, we had so flowers Mom for some. bought a number of these peonies. You know, not a range of peonies. They were just a nice bunch of flowers. Well, that bunch of flowers went, back and, went forth. back and forth, each one. I mean, you can't buy all those bouquets. As you played, you got the flowers. You came up and brought them in a child <laughs> down the road. You came ready to come up again. <laughs> that same bouquet was given to each of the performers throughout the night. It's the most wonderful story, and it's true. <laughs> you know, Rosie played uh, with the matinee musical uh, orchestra. And they were having a recital, uh, a concert that afternoon, and Silva and I had gone. Uh, I guess it was Sunday afternoon, I was still working. We went down to the floor shop to open for one, a flower, a pin. <laughs> we gave it to you. That's very cute. Well, we had such a revolution. But that was one precious day. In fact, it was with her, one of her recitals. She played a little um, a, a program with singing. Miriam sang, and she was dressed as, as an Indian. Indian. <laughs> her Miriam's very dark and had, had very black hair. And she wore a feather. She wore a feather, <laughs> wore a feather up. Right. And I, that's where I got my first start in company. She must oh. have recognized it. Then. Yeah, I accompanied the singer's voice. I remember playing Carrie back to Old Virginia, too, that she sang. This I don't remember. Yeah. Well, you know, each one. I remember Miriam and the Indian. I was praying, Mother. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that was at the height of my career. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I told you about the time we went to hear Anna Russell. Year, oh, uh, two yeah. years ago, three years ago, when was she? was oh, Rhea right, Sylvan, so I went. And Anna yeah. Russell is very entertaining. Very and fits right into all of this kind of This action. period yeah. that we're, we were in. So she gets up on anything. one thing. Yes, they would. Anybody who likes music, I think, would have and fun And has fun in their yeah. background. She gets up and she says, now then there was a period of the ladies' meetings, and I don't remember all the details, but this is a ladies' meeting, and always among the ladies, there were three pieces that were played. So-and-so, and so-and-so, and, -so, and Russell of Spring. <laughs> and three voices burst out laughing in that audience because I was it. <laughs> If you ever you see her program, you should go to hear her. She's very funny. She's she funny. did a thing on Anna Russell. On the um, she was an opera singer, and I guess of course she did all of it. That so was hysterically funny perform. because if you ever stop to take the story apart, it's so utterly. Which story, Ray? And Wagner's Rain. Oh yes, when she, she does the Valkyrie, she oh, does a few Oh God, it's just extremely <laughs> funny. You really, if ever she comes up there, she concertizes a lot. She makes, uh, she makes that story. The Valley Tropic, the Tropic oh, area. Oh yes, oh, I heard. Oh, I must go oh, see them. Oh, they really are a riot. They were in Toronto. Oh, oh they they were in Toronto. Yeah, right. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, I want to get get us because we have to go home. Um, well, you were speaking before of uh, Helen's uh, having the scarlet fever and we were in quarantine, but we had a wonderful time that time. Rosie, uh, that you were here, we had two weeks off that we weren't allowed to go to school. Oh, yes, school so, yes, was out. she went to the hospital. When we one person in the family weeks. had any, any of these yeah. diseases, she were quarantined. measles, anything. So we used to go out every day. We were right across the street from the park. We used to go to this tiny little candy store, Mrs. Stein's candy store, and buy our little bag of candy and go out in the park and spend our day in the park. And we just had a wonderful two weeks so we could go back to school. We were all readers in our family, yes. too. But there was one set of books I would never touch with a 10-foot pole because on Saturday afternoons was the time we were always around. A nice weather. Silv and Rosie, in particular, would sit there reading Elsie Dinsmore's, and the tears would flow down their cheeks. You know, they were real oh, sentimental, yeah. gutty the stuff. The whole series. 
And I vowed I would never read an Elsie Dinsmore, I never did. Well, we did, and what copious tears on her trials and tribulations. We also used that park, really used it. We used it winter and summer. Now, a lot of people used it in the summer, not many in the winter, and we walked a lot. We always walked. We walked down to the river. That's there were good. two libraries that were very far very from us. One was up towards um, one was on Midvale, Avenue. Midvale Avenue, and one was down at 17th of Montgomery, and they were the closest to us, and we were readers we in our family. Saturday. We would walk down Saturdays and take out books. Uh, we used the park for the boat races. We used it for tennis. We walked along the river. We used it some of them for tennis places. Well, if you don't walk it, you don't know there's a wonderful Well, I told you why I became a tennis counselor, didn't I? When I was going to camp and, and they didn't know what sort of job to give me as a counselor, Rosie and Helen were good tennis players, so they made me a tennis counselor. I didn't play tennis very well. You also used to buy tickets for shopping, oh, didn't you? Yeah. We, well, we were very Saturday. young and wanted to go to the Saturday matinees around the corner. The theater was very close. And the man yeah. knew our family. Later, they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't give you a ticket on Friday for Saturday. They I had to, to go over and buy the tickets. We would go over and get the tickets. My father would only allow us to go if we did that. He could not buy the tickets on Saturday. But he allowed we us to go. To town for the concerts, Everything. different things we wanted on Saturday afternoons. You know, you bought your tickets to head for that. At the Wayne movie theater, Martin. Yeah, but later they stopped it. Later they stopped it. They wouldn't let you do it. Yeah, it became yours. There was another thing that we used to do. We would walk when we were. This was when we were college students. Yes. We would walk out to Penn for the, the football games on Saturday. That's some walk. But a few friends would often like the idea and would join us in the walk. Not because they didn't ride, but because they wanted to. It was fun. We would walk down and. and of course, we were all good walkers. We also would walk to the museums. I remember when the art museum opened. I remember when the library opened and the road down. We walked to those places. During the week, we didn't have time. And um, no, because during the week we were just taking piano lessons. <laughs> <laughs> we also went to Hebrew school, and we went to the dentist. And <laughs> the same programs you had after work. <laughs> Even then. Um, <laughs> Well, we, everybody who ever came to our house, any one of our friends, Rose's friends, Sil's friends, Rose's friends, everybody loved to come to our house because there was always such a wonderful warmth. And warmth from our parents, from our parents which parents. often That's is right. yes. not the thing that I use. They paid attention to them. They meant something. They were an individual, not just one of your children's friends who came in the yeah. room. My friends, Lenny particularly, Lenny? often talks about the... Gert Schaefer? Yeah. Nez. She really felt wanted. Of course, Nez's relationship was Was different. hers yeah. was special. In fact, she says our friendship was continuing because of her. We had moved out of uh, the old neighborhood of Jerusalem. And we had no car, remember? No, there were no cars. But Pop, their uh, shop was, Nez then, a little later, moved to uh, Kensington Avenue, which was more or less on, they were behind Kensington. On the way, Pop would stop from the mill, which was further into Frankfurt, pick her up and bring her out to our house. So that she could be with Rhea, and Rhea could have her. Mm. Until we were old enough to be able to take the trolleys, because we had a change, and go visit one another, and we used to alternate on Grandpa, is this in the trolley? Yes. Oh, sure. We didn't Did you ever have horse and buggy? No. Yeah. Yep. They had when they made deliveries from the butcher shop, but I don't remember everything. No, we didn't have. No. We didn't have any personal we transportation. We usually, uh, we had we to had walk to Frankfurt Avenue and take the Frankfurt Avenue the trolley the, or to the Lehigh the Avenue for the 54 trolley. Oh. And they were trolleys, not buses. As so. children, Mom used to take us to all the historical places. In the yeah, when we were young, I went to the Mint, we went to the Zoo, we went to Independence Hall, all these places. which was not usual for families like ours, but we were taken to these places when we were young. And in the summer, we used to have the picnic out as well. Yeah. So we lived in Jerusalem, yeah, we used to pack the bags. And you'd take the 54 trolley, which yeah. took you which right out to Fairmount Park. It was a long it drag, but it took you to Fairmount Park. Uh, uh, I think it still runs there. Yes, it does. And uh, we'd have a picnic out there. And then, too, we used to ride the park trolley. Well, that was when we lived in Yeah, that was really great. What about... Um, Holidays, things like Pesach, what were the kinds of things that were going on? Oh, all the holidays had it. We had a large house. house. We had a large house. There were 14 rooms in that house and two bathrooms, one on the second floor, one on the floor. Five wood floors and bathrooms. 
and real thick tiles on the walls. And the floors downstairs were parquet, which they had put in when they never forget. They were gorgeous floors. Which they only had this one company come, the company that put them down, to redo every now and then. Anyway, it was a large house. It had downstairs, there was a small vestibule that you came into, which led right into a large living room. And then there was a turned staircase that went up to the second floor in the living room. And there was another funny incident there. Under that staircase was a clothes closet, and it had a little shelf. And we were one of the early people with telephones. We had a telephone there, didn't we? And that's where you held your conversations. No place to sit or anything. It just stood there under the slate of the stairs. And you stood right there. Well, because Eddie could stifle in there if he wanted to try to close the door to the closet. Sylvia and I went to the theater a few years ago. And it was a play in which there was a living room scene and a stairs that came down like ours and a closet underneath. And the phone rings at one point, And this man comes down the stairs and in an angry mood says, who ever heard of a telephone in a closed closet? <laughs> And again, two voices right now. <laughs> well, now I know why. You, a number of years ago, when I was at Sally and Joseph Fisky's house, Sally was talking to the telephone, and John and I were talking there. She wanted to buy it, so she took it into the closet. And the, the phone <laughs> was connected in the closet. Yeah, well, ours was too. And I couldn't. I guess Joe <laughs> And of course, with all the injustice still going on around me in my household, they always said I was called to the phone every time it was time to clear the day. <laughs> anyway, that was a very funny thing when that happened in the theater. Oh, so, but I simply bored. It was exactly our setup. The stairs came like that, and there was that slanty closet, and he says, who ever heard of a phone in a closed closet? <laughs> that was one great line. You were starting to tell about the, about the holidays. Well, we um, had this large house, and when Pesach came, we always had 20-some people. It was usually 20-some. Oh, yeah, and okay. they had this friend of my father's, my father used to give them work, build a table, which was put on these wooden horses, and then these long boards were put across, and that became the sure, table, covered with table covers. And the long the garage bench. on Gator Road. Yeah. 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 And the long yeah. benches. And we would be quite a crowd, and it was in the living room, where it was a long, big room. You Maybe. Yes. Yes, well, that, I remember and when we were And on 33rd Street, you know. Well, on 33rd, it was, well, on 33rd, it was very well set because the room was able to take it so well. No, but no, no, before you were born. When we were teenagers, when I lived your car. You got remember that? What did I do? There was room there, maybe. She won 33rd Street when I was born. I remember that house. That's right. You came back for the holidays. Don't you remember packing back and forth for you? Not then. We did when we were first married and we'd come every weekend. Leonard always just did. He's complaining about that. Came every Friday. They were packing to come back every weekend. <laughs> anyway, it was a very festive room, and it was a very gay and wonderful uh, table. Especially, especially before Pesach, when everything had to be made, you know, you had to start ahead, you had to be cleaning out ahead, and all of that. And you come in, and the aroma of everything. Was and everything was made at home, remember. Everything. None of this was packaged stuff or catered stuff at that. No, everything was you made. You didn't eat milk. We had yes. it. We did by that, by that time. We had it only for breakfast when we started. Only breakfast. But then as more but things then, came yeah. out, we began and you to see, uh, <laughs> Grandpa did not care for me particularly. He preferred nothing. That's why we only had nothing on Friday night. I was sure we had another family that didn't have chicken exactly. dinner Friday. That but was Grandpa why. didn't like but he did. And Mom did. You had milk on Friday? Yes, oh, and right. whenever I tell that to people, they just, they never they, heard of it. Yeah, they, My they mother they would make for Shabbos. For All day long there was cooking, but because she made milk for Friday night and Fleischik, that meant cleaning out the place, then setting up for Fleischik for Shabbos, and, she, and that was and something. she baked, she baked cake, part of a cake for Shabbos, she baked pies, and not one kind of pie That's for right. Friday night. My no. father liked cheese pie, not too sweet, she always she made, made the way he liked it, and she, he got his cheese pie, we got yeah. our coconut custard, custard or a lemon pie, or whatever we wanted. No matter how All short of this by day, hand, no shells. Yeah. No <laughs> <by> <laughs> shells. <laughs> Made her own gefilte fish. 
from beginning to end. And she used to make it uh, with a block this afternoon. And this was, you'd come home on a Thursday afternoon and the whole breakfast room table, which was this size, was covered and strips of noodle things would be drying out on the table ready to be. They used to make their own noodles and took everything. Pop, Grand Pop stopped Mom from doing it because it was so much extra work. They were already out on the market by Mama Shevin's and so on as coaches were new. So he really made her stop doing it. He made her stop making collars because Hannah Hurd was a family to take care of. Just dust them. We always had somebody. And even, we were never even just before them. we moved from when they were in the butcher shop, the two men who worked for them in the butcher shop, you don't go out to eat. Yeah. They can't, and they used, they used to, come to eat one after mother. another. They couldn't all go out and close the store for one hour for another. They came one after another. And I remember the washing of clothes when we were on the by Jerusalem. Hand. In the great big wash tub, and they dragged the kettles of water to fill them. We had a back porch in the milder weather. They could do it on the outside, and a very good yard. We were one of the best houses in that neighborhood, remember? We had a lot of we things that other bathroom. people didn't. Well, I told An indoor bathroom long before other people had. But my grandpa built this house. I don't know how long they were married. Yeah, I don't know where they lived before. They lived anywhere else. I don't know, but, uh, but they, they were really lived there all the time. The people next door, his name was there from Max Myers. and Molly also. Yes, they were Molly. She was Molly. Oh, yeah. Max and Molly. In the, in the, uh, That's right, they were the both. Very, in that, uh, with, uh, Mama. And, uh, they were buried in that room with Mama. And Zadie. Oh, what happened to the two boys? They had two sons. Anyway, um, in that, in the 33rd Street, that set up for holidays. And we always had guests. There was never a time we had a holiday, but there weren't some kind of guests. Even ordinary. I would, we always had some. Mom and Pop believed that if there was someone who didn't have a Seder to go to, they should be a Well, if they had a family, and they didn't want to have a Seder, that was their business. But anyone who really wouldn't have a Seder, like I would invite Chef before she was married, I would invite Chef. I remember her having invited a Jewish man who came to Seder. He invited a boy a couple of times uh, who was from out of town at Penn oh, and... Uh, and wouldn't be good. Let me ask you. Whenever I make crocs and I serve it to people, and I tell them that it's crocs, I have to explain that it's like cabbage or colleges or any other word. But nobody I've ever spoken to has recognized it as crocs. No, because we usually make it. As a matter of fact, we didn't call it Prockers either. We called it stuffed cabbage, Rhea. No, but, well, the Prockers well, name came later. No, it was Prockers Crows, and we talked yes. about it in English. We called it so yes. 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 Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You can never met anybody. You can yes. spoke or something, Prockers. You yes. see it on the shelves. Uh, they yeah. sell it. They make it and sell it and enjoy it now, yeah. Prockers. Yeah. <laughs> I would never. I've already given yeah, out our recipe. Do you still, do you ever make that sweet I even, <laughs> we get invited sometimes. Um, we never, I never used to like to go to these towns to break fast because we have our ways yeah. and I yeah. like those. The ways. way I felt about so now I have to, I have to take with me. I mean, it was nice. There nobody was else in the world likes it. <laughs> <laughs> but I always have to make it. Right, take it with me and lay it out on the table. <laughs> What? But we should have been born dynamic. <laughs> 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 because we wanted to get back to somebody who's coming drunk out of their Christmas party. Yeah. You mentioned yeah. Mr. Silverman. He used to, he was a man who was almost entirely alone by that time. He had children, but they didn't pay much attention to him. And he was living in a room in Silver and Mansion. And he used to have shopping for a little like four and a half. And he was quite an eater in there. And we were always anxious to get after we finished. We were always going someplace to a game or the movies, right. whatever, whatever it was. Whatever. Yeah. We get down after it and we start to clear the table. They do that to me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like her when I eat. But they'll always say, now remember Mr. Silver because we would clear all <laughs> And the poor guy would be eating and we would take everything else off and just sort of wait for him to get it going. You know? My mom would never let us take the plate that had them, you know, more if he wanted more. <laughs> but uh, he used to do uh, hands that go, as uh, my mother said, that he made these the long tables. And, uh, but he was a he set up solid worker. Yeah. He was he a good, good solid worker. When he made something, <laughs> he couldn't get it apart. <laughs> 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 he 
<laughs> if it was to last a week, it should have lasted 10 years. He loved King George that he made for my mother. Wow. <laughs> you listen to that. And it was on good solid wood to give the sled, you know, for the... And, and it had a rim right. so that it wouldn't run no, over. he really made a board. <laughs> but he used to make that stuff. He made it at one point with slats. Uh, not, you know, like wooden slats, crisscrossing like ladders. Not a nail in it, which is traditional. He tied all these and then took it off in sections and, you know, after he went to... Well, he started right after Pesach. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but afterwards, you know, it used to be put away for that. Yeah. But he was a nice old man. Loved. Yes, it was. They and they paid him, and he yeah, ate at our place, and they took care of him. He had a feeling of being with him. And he had family, uh, uh, you know, there was a family atmosphere. Yes. He had something that a lot of people would like to have of him. I never even felt he had children. He just oh, ignored them. Yeah, I don't think they did. He got along or something. No. But I don't really, I didn't even remember, didn't know who they were, but I know who they were. Tell the greatest. Well, we had the, do you remember Dr. Sir? Yes, Dorothy's uh, middle name was it. Okay. Uh, now, I must have been impressed or I would not have thought of her. What? What was her second name? Anymore? No, it isn't because of the uh, stuff, but it was given to her at the time. What was her second name? Though? And I don't know Guess, what was it? I think her name was Getz. I know she, she was, was on the Getz side. And then what about Esther Sproul? All the years that she came. Yeah, she used to come to our house regularly. Came. And my cousin of my mother's who never married and was a nice lady. Yeah, was a sweet old lady. Who held her name. Sproul. 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 You know how the Salzman takes one of my classes with I see her all the time. Yeah, she looks at this thing. And you girls chat about the play. <laughs> Oh, okay. um, you want to know about came Greek? to our house on, the, on, on Sunday. Sunday. On 33rd Street, as was open house. It was a big house. And Ken and her, all of our relatives, and they all remember it very well. They all remember it, and Hilda was saying to me recently how they loved to come on Sundays. And her mother would dress them up, and they would take the trolley, and they would come. Well, they did love to come whenever they came. And they were a family with about five children, and they came. That was an aunt. That was, she was a sister of Zadie's. We were wondering about Zadie's. That's family. right. She, she was Zadie's sister. Was a, That's right. Uh, anyway, um, Sunday was an impossible time for us because all we did all day was clear the table and serve and wash dishes. There were no dishwashers. There were no things like that. We did not have cook suppers because we never knew how many hundreds of people were coming. <laughs> so it was opening cans of salmon mostly in those days. We would always have lox, which wasn't $10 to $15 a bite, and um, coffee, cake. coffee and cake, and we would open cans of corn or peas or something like that. And this went on all the lettuce and tomato was all there. At least three around a big table like this, or five. sometimes four. And I used to get good and sore by the time the evening wore on. But it was really wonderful. Where does everybody do that? I mean, no place in the world. And they all came. They loved it. They just loved coming Even there. This. Oh, from uh, Chester. No, I don't mean the windows. No. The other day, Harry Block. Harry Block? Yes, it was related Block? to Grandpa. Yes. Harry Block. She was such a pretty She woman. was a pretty woman. And they had, what, three or four children? And they would come, and they were cousins or something. They, they were weren't even that close. Anyway, it was that kind of castle. Uh, about Rita and our cousin Jack. This was the and time the of... It was, it was a little before Hitler, but Rita came. And the first world war. No, it was she in the late night. Him. She late 1920s, though, Rita. It wasn't. Well, there, it wasn't late. Yes. Or it was mid, anyway. It was not right after the war, first world war. Uh, it was a little later than that. Anyway, my father got a letter from some distant cousins who he had, did not know, who knew about him, and apparently were a large family and very poor, and things were hard in Germany and asking if they could send a daughter. No, they were sending a son. That was the thing. They were oh. sending a son. Oh, I didn't know that. They were sending a the son. They were sending... But their children. I expected it was a son, not a daughter. 
to yeah. come and live with us. Now we were a household of ten. Yes, we were ten over. He brought her over, and when she came, she was a sweet, darling, very shy, and meek. Yes, very How reserved. Kept alone. I, when you think back on it. How she ever survived those first years where we could not communicate with her because we didn't know enough Yiddish to try the German, and she knew no English. I remember taking a walk around the park with her one nice night, and we walked, and we couldn't talk to each other, and it was so sad. And I felt like crying that time because I thought she was so lonely, this young girl coming to a strange land, strange people, which she didn't know of, and a strange tongue. What was it that means? I don't remember that. But, uh, she wasn't married yet anyway. Or early 20s. Maybe not. Probably so that was the kind of person she was, and we all felt very protective of her. Didn't you? I did. My father helped get her a job, I think. Mm -hmm. And she I went, somebody in the family did, and she went to night school to learn English. She was <coughs> very willing to try to adjust. And she lived with us for quite a while until she was able, then she but went she to live with Aunt Yeti. Yes. And she lived at Aunt Yeti's for a while, and then she took a place of her own now. She never did? Oh, yeah. And she met this a girl lived alone. That's yeah. right, they did. So she stayed, lived with Aunt Yeti's for a while, and then she married, and later had two children, who were very nice people. We don't get to see them. They are very and nice. Very nice. They're wonderful. Her husband died many years ago, and they had a small store grocery and they made sandwiches. They lived uh, down on se near Second and Howard or someplace like that. Howard, yeah, Howard and Howard and something near. And they were across the street from a couple of very large mills. And these people would come in to get sandwiches for lunch. So they made lunch up made up lunch boxes to send in and people would come in for lunch. Yeah. And uh, they worked very hard, he and she, he yeah. too, okay. was too. Yes. and it was a small store, and the small <laughs> house that they lived behind the store and upstairs, they had a second floor. And she is still living there. The husband is dead, the children are married and live in nice neighborhoods, and they have children. Her, uh, one went to Israel. The granddaughter, yes, went on one of these uh, six weeks, they went to Mass, uh, you know, now, and they're going to Israel. And uh, she went to Israel on a six weeks trip, and now that she's spending a year in Israel, I think she's there now. Yeah. So, um, they have relatives. She had two nieces who uh, were able to One was to married to a doctor. The, the Holocaust. And dad, yeah. Uh, one was all marked they, up. Yeah, and they uh, finally, arm. finally made their way through Switzerland and then on to Israel, two of them was in I saw them at the post when yes, I was Sam and I did on that 1959. Yeah, I, we looked them up and uh, had them come to the hotel for years. They wouldn't stay for them. Yes, and to stay in the room. Anyway, one was married to a doctor and the other to some sort of uh, So we are still in touch with Rita, even though we don't see her very much, and we're very fond of her, and she calls Aunt Min once in a while and talks to her. She is really crippled with arthritis, and she lives alone in that place behind the store. Her son Simon comes and runs the store. Apparently, there's enough in it. They made it for lunch in it. I haven't but seen it recently. And, uh, but on weekends, weekends she goes to one store, and then to the, I think she takes turns. She's little, 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 little. And she's like, uh, and they're very attentive. The children have to follow her. She's a wonderful yes, person. Yes, she's now he also brought over another cousin who we never knew and whose family he didn't know. And this was after Hitler came into town. And it really was important to get him out. And he had a terrible time getting him admitted to this country. My father did everything, turned all kinds of things. And uh, he finally did arrive. And Jack was a perfect lady. He had the most beautiful hands and fingers. Good looking, yeah. Very good looking. Slight. He was not a big guy, but he looked slight. And for a while he worked in the mill, but that was not for his life. And as things went on anyway, he finally uh, got a job and then moved out into a place. He lived at our place for a while. Yeah, he lived in us. He was working on the job. 
and live with us. They didn't just visit, they lived with us. Later he got a job at Morville. And he worked at Morville. And he was good looking. He was very good looking. In a slim, slight way. And a few times the newspaper ads with their models was checked. So they didn't even knew that the model was in fact. He opened up the store. He was there for years until he retired. That she saw, not I, Minto. And she said, You came, so you now let me know the child. He was so fastidious and so immaculate and so, um, there's a word I want to describe. He was really a dandy. Took marvelous care of his appearance. As I said, his hands were beautiful and his fingernails. This kind of thing. The man doesn't use it for that much. He served in the army for a while. But an interpreter was it? served in some capacity in the army. Yeah. We don't know. He didn't marry here. But at one point, the FBI, before he was going into the service, they were probably investigating because he had come from Germany and they, you know, they had lots of background. So they were investigating him. They could have used him in this capacity, whatever it was, but you know, they used to do quite a thorough thing on the people they were questioning. And they once told Pop, I think, that he had been married in England. And when Pop asked him, he said no. So we don't know if he was ever married. He never married here. He lived the mom. I'll tell you. That's right. We would never uh, dispose of it.